All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Hello, inventors and entrepreneurs. My name is Courtney Laskowicz, and I'm the managing director here at Inventors Groups of America, and welcome to Inventors Online. Thank you, everyone, for joining our very exciting workshop for the night. Now, IGA was founded in 2017 by Stephen Key and Andrew Krauss. IGA's goal is to teach individuals how to best commercialize their product ideas, as well as strengthen and support inventors groups throughout the nation. We have a directory of local and regional inventors groups on our website, whom we meet with every single month. And if you are located near one, we highly encourage you to join. We'd love to hear your name in what state or country you are from. So go on over right now, open up that chat box and let us know. Of course, please do not publicly disclose anything that is confidential. And then of course, our meeting is being recorded here and will be harnessed on our website and YouTube channel soon after. Of course, feel free to change your name in the participants panel, choose to be in speaker or gallery mode at any time. And though it is not required, we would love for you to turn on your video. Now, just to get a quick scan here, um, is anyone new to Inventors Online? If so, right now, go ahead and flash your hands in front of the screen. See if we can see anyone new here. Yeah, all right. A couple people. Okay, here we go. There's so many screens here. Got to go through them all. Excellent. Well, for those of you who are new, welcome to your very first meeting. Uh, today, our guest speakers will be talking about how to use LinkedIn to pitch and how to overcome your fear of pitching. So let's just set the stage here for a second. You're a product developer. You've made your way to the point of pitching. Taking all the necessary steps to get to pitching is a big deal, and you've made it this far, but you freeze. How do you pitch? How do you st start divulging everything about your product on the phone? Do you do that? Can you even use social media to get your product to the right person? What scripts do you use? Are you nervous? Have you never pitched an idea before? Luckily, if this sounds anything like you, we get it, and we've all been there. Smart Pitch creator Benjamin Harrison and communications coach Justin Aquino will be here for our expert teachers of the night. And boy, are they here to help us. Stay tuned, of course, at the end and learn how to get Stephen and Ben's new book uh, for free, Licensing Ideas LinkedIn, which includes everything you need to know to reach out to companies looking for ideas. Of course, we will also give, be giving away five free tickets to attend a Smart Pitch meeting. Now, first, let me introduce the men of the hour. First up to bat, he's a product developer, an author, an artist, a lifelong entrepreneur featured in both music and business magazines. Put your hands together for a LinkedIn master and extraordinaire smart pitch creator, Benjamin Harrison. Hey, how's Thank it going, so everybody? Much. Thanks for the introduction, Courtney. Absolutely, yeah. I need a little more pumping up than, than that, <laughs> though. You've got to give me a little more. Could we do another take with some enthusiasm? <laughs> Too bad we can't hear everyone clapping and, and screaming your name. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for being so here, much. Ben. It's my yeah. pleasure. So now that we got Ben out of the way, let me introduce our second speaker, founder and head coach of Cool Communicator, known for teaching public speaking with hundreds of clients from over 20 countries with students overcoming stage fright, performing high stakes presentations, and presenting at TEDx. Get ready to get up close and personal with our overcoming pitching fears expert, Justin Aquino. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure hey. to be here. And uh, that, that's, a, that's quite an introduction, you know. I mean, you could, Courtney, you could be a professional MC at some point. Uh, I know. love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Absolutely. So uh, those are our two speakers of the night. Um, of course, uh, if we do get to questions, go ahead and uh, for those of you who are new, please type in your questions into the chat box and towards the end, we will unmute you to go ahead and ask that question live. All right, now, uh, before we start, Andrew, did you wanna mention anything before we go ahead? I just wanted to say that uh, having done InventRight for 21 years, ran an inventor group for 14 years, Inventors have fears, and I'm so glad that we have two experts on the night to help you overcome 
some of your fears so you can move forward. So thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Andrew. All right. So Ben, let me set this scenario for you. I'm an inventor and I'm ready to pitch. I have a professional sell sheet. Uh, I have never pitched before. Uh, I don't like social media, uh, but I did create a LinkedIn account about 10 years ago. I've never really used it. Don't really know how to. Uh, and so I would love to ask you, Ben, where do I start and how do I get my product in front of the right people? So Courtney, it's funny. Uh, that's actually where a lot of people are at. Uh, uh, we didn't stage that, but yeah, you're right. That's where a lot of people are, is they don't like social media. It's not really their thing. And uh, maybe they've had a LinkedIn account for a long time, but they've never re really utilized it. And where I think uh, the fear comes in for a lot of inventors whenever it comes to this is uh, they, they think whenever they go to use LinkedIn that it's going to be something where they have to uh, become an influencer or they have to create a whole bunch of content in order to use the platform at all. And so what I want to do for everybody tonight is just give a basic overview of step-by-step -step how this process works of researching companies and then making connections and then reaching out to those companies. So you guys can see it on screen, in person, live right here. So you don't have to be afraid of it because it's not something that you need to be afraid of at all. So without further ado, uh, Courtney, if you are okay with it, I'll just go ahead and get into a screen share and we can start to talk through how to research a company and then how to make connections within those companies and then how to reach out. That sound good? Go for it. Hey, if it's good with you, see. So I'm going to share my screen. And what we're gonna do guys is we are going to look for screw companies is, is what we're gonna do. And whenever I'm doing research, I like to start out with uh, where the product's actually gonna end up at. I like to see who it is that, that's in these stores and then work from there. So we're just gonna type into Home Depot screws. I'm not even going to go wood screws. And so what you're able to do very easily is to scroll through and you can find who are the actual companies that sell in these stores. Uh, and so I'm noticing Deckmate, Gripright, Simpson Strong Tie. I know Gripright is Home Depot's uh, brand but I'm able to go through and see, okay, these are the people that are actually selling in these stores. So these would be good potential licensees. I see GRK, I see Gripright, and I also see St Simpson Strong Tie. I'm gonna go over to Lowe's as well. We're gonna do the exact same thing. If we were doing this, uh, we, we would be actually making a hit list of companies as we're going through this process, copying and pasting. But just to do this quickly, I'm just going to do a couple off the top of my head here. You'll notice Power Pro, but you'll also notice that that is a, a Hillman brand. And that's something that you'll notice a lot of whenever you're, you're going through hardware companies is that there will be multiple, uh, multiple names under one brand. Uh, Hillman here is so they're in both uh, Home Depot and in Lowe's as is Simpson Strong Tie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to LinkedIn and I'm going to look at I'm going to look up Simpson Strong Tie. That already pops up. We're going to go over there. You can see from this main overview uh, first off, I'm already following them, which I would recommend doing as soon as you uh, find a company that you're going to be uh, wanting to reach out to. Go ahead and follow them so their stuff ends up in your feed. You can see that they have 1,746 employees. They're a big company. Uh, you can see some of their current posts on here. 
you can read about them in their about section, which is uh, looking really weird right now. But uh, whenever, whenever you do all of that, you can start to get an idea for the company. But another thing that I like is you all also see this people also viewed area that will give you other companies that you can research as well that have something to do with the company that you're looking at. So it's a great way to find new companies that maybe weren't in the uh, uh, you know, Home Depot. So additional companies for your hit list. So once you're on a company's page like this, you can go to a list of their employees and it will pull up uh, everybody that, that works there. And I already have a good amount of connections, around 13,000. And so a lot of people that, a lot of times whenever I'm going into companies, I already have second or third degree connections within that company. So I would scroll through and I would just connect with different people within this company at this point. Uh, I like VP Global Marketing, Simpson Strong Tie. Why not? I'd like to go after people in marketing and in sales. And so all you have to do is just click connect. You have the ability to either add a custom request note or send your connection without one. I prefer to send my connection request without custom request notes if I do not specifically know that person or really have anything to say to them. And that's how easy it is. And at that point, you're just waiting for that person to respond to you. And then you give them a few days and um, or you, you wait for them to see if they connect with you. And then you give them a few days, uh, maybe a week, and then you're able to reach out to them once you're connected with them. But that's how e easy it is. It's not a, a really you know, difficult process. You're just going through doing a little bit of research and clicking connect. And that's how easy it is. If you want to send a uh, custom note, don't pitch in your custom note. That's the number one mistake that people make is they send this message in this custom connection request that's already asking something of someone. And it's a, a way to turn somebody off really quick. So if you are going to use this space, you can say, uh, hey, Damon, I'm a product developer. Would love to connect. Maybe I'll even get one of those because of how excited I am to connect with them. But that's all that it needs to be. If you're trying to pitch in that space, they're instantly going to ignore you and they may even block you. So if you are going to leave a custom note, make sure that it's super simple like that and that it's uh, not something where you're asking anything of them initially. So at this point, Andrew, Courtney, Justin, do you guys have any questions? I'm, I'm trying to make good time. Um, do you guys have any questions at all? Not yet, no. Okay. So another thing that you can do with a company like Simpson Strong Tie is let's try this one more time. Because there are companies or there are people within the company that are going to be um, active and there are people that aren't going to be active within the company. And one thing that I like to do is I'll enter in that company name up there. And instead of looking for people, I'll look for posts. I'll switch over and I'll look at, I'll look at posts and I'll scroll through that what this is doing now is it's pulling up all the posts that have something about sense and strong tie in it. And what you can do from there is just scroll through all of these and look and find you a, a, a post just like this one right here, 15 likes, one comment, but you can go to that 
you can see this guy, Michael Wolf. I'm not connected with him. He's a territory manager. He, he posted this. But you can see the reactions out of people and see what do we have here? Here's the reaction. There's a first degree connection. There's another first degree connection. What do we have over here? We have a second degree connection who's a sales representative for, uh, for Sense and Strong Tie. I'm not connected with him, but I know that he's active on LinkedIn. I know that he's participating on his company's post on LinkedIn. So I can write there from that post of theirs, actually go through, here's another senior salesman at Sense and Strong Tie. They're actively on LinkedIn. I can connect with them just like that. And this is just one post of theirs that, that we found. And now here are all these different people that I can connect with that I can guarantee are more active just because they're recently, it was six days ago that they're commenting on this or liking this. So I can even target those specific people because they're more likely to get back in touch with me. So what you do once you have made a connection and you've waited a couple of days and you want to reach out to that connection is you're gonna just message them a very simple message. It doesn't have to be uh, anything special. It's better if it's simple and short and it's not a scary thing at all to do. I understand at first you, you sit there and you hover over the, the button, you're scared to press it, but you get over it really quick. But I'm gonna look up uh, Tacoma Screw Products. I made a connection within there recently. Tracy, there's a connection within uh, Tacoma Screw Products. And I'm gonna message Tracy right now live uh, exactly what I would message her. I'm gonna copy and paste from a pitch script that I have, paste it right over there. Her name obviously isn't Bob, so we're gonna fix that. But the message just reads, hey Tracy, I have a new product I'd like to submit to Tacoma Screw Products. For review, do you know who handles your open innovation submissions? Do you know who handles open innovation submissions for your company? That, that's it, easy as that. I may give her a thanks for your time because I'm feeling generous. And that's it, that's all you gotta do. Hit send, nobody bites, nobody, life isn't over, uh, nothing comes crashing down. A lot of times people will respond to you at that point. And if we have time later on, after Justin upstages me with his, uh, his wonderful performance that he's going to deliver, we can talk a little bit about what the questions that you will typically get uh, after submitting your your pro or your uh, marketing material, we can talk a little bit about that and, and how to how I think it's best to overcome the fear of those questions. But that's my spiel. Hopefully, I got done quick enough where we can do this. I know that's very just broad, big picture stuff, guys. But I want you to see that's the process I use. That's, that's how easy it is. Thank you, Ben. No, we really appreciate that. That is extremely insightful for our audience. One question that I have for you is in relation to pitching when you're licensing a product and you can cold call, you can email, you can use LinkedIn. Can you just briefly talk about the difference, differences between those three and why would someone even try using LinkedIn compared to the other methods? What I really like about LinkedIn in comparison to the other methods is that you're able to control the way that people perceive you in a way that you can't necessarily control in an email or in a cold call. And it, it, it sets you up to make, to make you an easy yes 
for somebody to, to respond to if you set your profile up correctly. Uh, cold calling, uh, I think, has a lot lower success rate of people responding, people picking up the phone. And it's something that you can only do during certain times of day and on certain days. And so link, LinkedIn is, is where a lot of executives spend their, their time as well. So it's where the decision makers are and it's how you get in touch with them. They, they're becoming harder and harder to get on the phone. And um, the phone is more of a warm lead tool at this point, in, in my opinion. There's a lot of times where, uh, you know, sometimes you can't get in with LinkedIn. Sometimes you can't get in with emails. And that's, that's when it is time for, in my opinion, you got to call, you got to email, you got to exhaust all your options. But I like to lead with LinkedIn because it gives me that control over the way that I'm being perceived. And how do you feel about connecting with and messaging uh, multiple people from the same company at a, the same time compared to maybe waiting for someone to respond? Do you have a recommendation on like spamming a bunch of uh, people and who knows if they're going to actually respond or not? So it's okay to send, you know, five of the same messages to the same company's employees or do you have a, a preference of just one employee and then wait and maybe try another? Okay, first off, I'm going to have to take issue with your use of the word spam, because it's not what we're doing. We're, we're, asking, we're asking people to be directed to the right person in their company. And I don't want you guys to think that you're spamming people because you're not. You're asking a professional that's representing a company on a professional platform who at their company takes care of this function. And so think about it as, as that. You're supposed to be there. You're supposed to be asking them that. You're not spamming them necessarily. You're asking them a, a business question. But as far as connect with as many people as you can, uh, there's, there, you don't get to pick who helps you. Uh, you don't get to pick who's going to be responsive, who's going to be willing to carry the torch for you. So connect with as many people as you can. My rule of thumb on how many people I reach out to uh, at once within the same company is like four, no more than five or six in, at the same time, because I normally will get a, at least a 25% response rate. And so if I send out four messages, one I know one person is going to respond to me. Ryan Diaz, the LinkedIn OG, he doesn't care. He'll send out 12 at once. He doesn't care. So everybody goes about it different. But I, I expect a uh, 30 to 40% response rate. So I send out enough to ensure that I'll get one response. And that's normally four to five uh, at, at most. Great. And then before we move on to Justin, just a, a brief overview of what the heck is Smart Pitch for those who have no idea what that program is. So Smart Pitch is a program Andrew and I worked on together uh, for, for years. And uh, it was an online program that teaches everybody these steps. It, and it, it shows you on screen how to go through all the different steps to get your, your profile up and running and then how to reach out to people and gives a bunch of examples of scripts. But I think the really neat thing about Smart Pitch isn't, the, the course is great, but the unexpected uh, gem in Smart Pitch was that we had a Q&A session built into the course and it went from a Q&A session to a place where inventors hang out and meet and everybody contributes. And we have people that aren't even students, people that have licensed products, people that are had you know, licensed products 25 years ago that, that stop in and hang out and everybody contributes. And it's become this tight knit community that's more than just an online program. So uh, Smart Pitch is, is part online, you know, how to on screen program and part community coming together and having meetings and talking this through of how to stay current, what's working, what isn't. And uh, so that, that's how I would break Smart Pitch now. We have two meetings a month and uh, we're adding more meetings uh, to it. Uh, we're, we're doing more and more. So uh, that's how I would sum it up. 
Andrew, Perfect. you have anything to say about that? You paying attention, Andrew? We. I was just. I just didn't. I didn't want to like make any noises when you're trying to talk, so I muted myself. Um, <laughs> I. I, I think it's an incredible program we have over there at Invent, right? And it's quite a community. It's not just an approach. I think when you're putting yourself out there and we're talking about fear today and you're fearful about doing it and then you hear like you're struggling, like, oh, I had a really hard time this week. You hear somebody else say, you know, I had a hard time last week, but now I'm doing great, you know, and it's very encouraging. But it's also nice to hear the reality, like that other people are struggling with this or that. Because when you learn something new, it always takes longer. The second time you do it, it gets more familiar. So it's a way to get familiar with this very important thing when you're licensing in a community and you realize you're not the only one. When you're all by yourself, kind of sucks. And you're just such a great supporter of everybody and you rally the community together. And so I think it's a great program we have over there at EventRight. Thank you, Andrew. Wonderful. Um, all right, sorry. I will. I will unshare my screen. My bad. All Courtney, right. nice, nice, subtle, nice, subtle hint. She, I, I got her Skype message on my on my Apple Watch. Thank you. Sorry about that. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ben, for teaching us about LinkedIn. We'll get to a little bit uh, about that more later if we've got some time with some Q and A. That I've got some really good questions here in the chat. But for now, Justin, uh, you have got the floor. Feel free to go ahead and start your presentation here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Courtney. Appreciate it. And uh, good stuff, Ben. Appreciate that. Thank you for the LinkedIn tips. And thank you for having the best hair in the group also. I uh, just wanted to put that out there. So uh, <laughs> so I think we're up to 200 participants now on, on the call here. And uh, I, I just discovered this group very recently. I was brought in by Stephen Key. Uh, who all of you know, and uh, you know, this is a really interesting and engaging group. So it's great to see everybody's engagement and passion and excitement for improving themselves and uh, advancing their, their products and their businesses. So that's really cool to see the social media activity before the event today. Um, so I was connected to Stephen Key uh, by Mark Portney, who most of you know, if you don't know, Mark Portney is a successful investor in inventions and a lot of consumer products. And he's had a very successful career over many years. And I actually coached Mark a couple years ago uh, back in New York uh, doing public speaking coaching. And if you've ever seen Mark or you've interacted with him, you've worked with him, you know he's a confident guy. He has a lot of success under his belt. And you might think, okay, what does a guy like that need a public speaking coach for? Well, it turns out he had stage fright. And that stage fright interfered with his ability to convey that great authentic personality that he has uh, on stage and also on the TV camera. So I, I mentioned that just to emphasize that if you're struggling with the fear of the pitch, public speaking, fear, stage fright, rest assured you're not alone. And rest assured that there's uh, many, many successful people that have been there, done that and have been able to improve their skills in that respect. So um, there's three key concepts that I want you to take away today. The three E's is what I'm calling them. And if you take nothing else away from the talk today, make sure it's these three E's. The three E's are experience, explore, and expect. Experience, what does that mean? Ultimately, the way you overcome any fear is through experience. You have to get exposure to that situation. You have to experience, it could be just general public speaking. It could be general pitching. Maybe for whatever reason, you're nervous pitching your particular product. Or it could be experience in front of specific groups of people. So a lot of times I've worked with clients that are on the younger end, say early 20s, mid 20s, and they're intimidated by older people, for example. And I've seen some people that are older, so to speak, that are intimidated by younger people. I've seen, I've worked with a number of immigrants to the United States, and a lot of times they're uh, intimidated uh, in front of native English speakers, for example. You know, English is their second or third language, and so they have a lot of self-consciousness around their, uh, their English skills. So that might be a source of anxiety or nervousness, right? So whatever it is for you, it's going to be different for everybody. 
but you have to get that experience. If you don't have the experience under your belt, that nervousness and that anxiety is going to hang over you like the sword of Damocles. Okay. So you got to get the experience in how specifically to do that. We're going to get into that momentarily, how to actually plan things out when we work with our, uh, with our volunteer. Second thing is uh, explore and exploring means exploring the venue, exploring the situation. A lot of times when you go to a conference, you go to an expo or a trade show, you're kind of like a fish out of water. You need to explore the situation, explore the environment, get comfortable in it. Ideally, you want to feel like you are pitching or presenting in your own living room. Look at the layout of the venue. Look at where is the check-in booth? Where are the exhibits? Where's the sponsors? Where's the bar? Where's the food court? Right? All those little details make a difference in terms of your confidence and your comfort in the environment. The same concept applies with the audience. Explore the audience, chat with people, socialize with people. You want to humanize the audience because if your sense internally is that it's me versus the mob, right? It's just little old me against all these people. And it doesn't have to be a huge group of people. It could be just five key decision makers that have the chance to license your, uh, your product and potentially make you millions of dollars, right? Uh, that's intimidation. So the way you overcome that right before the pitch or the presentation, chat with the people, interact with them, humanize them, okay? So exploration. And the same thing applies over virtual. It could be a Zoom meeting. If it's a Zoom situation where you have a bunch of faces staring at you, explore that technology, get comfortable with the features on Zoom. If it's a conference call, get comfortable with all the, the, the microphone, the volume, all those little uh, elements, right? Those things are gonna uh, increase your confidence, help you feel more calm and more comfortable in the situation. And the last point is expect. What does that mean, expect? Specifically expect nervousness. Now that seems like a catch 22. That seems ironic because we're trying to overcome the nervousness. But what I always tell people is that nervousness, and I was literally having this conversation just an hour ago with a one-on-one with -on -one coaching client of mine. The nervousness is part of the process, okay? When you get in front of a group of people, especially intimidating people, whatever intimidating means for you, uh, there's going to be an automatic physiological response, okay? Uh, you might have your hands fidgeting. Maybe that's what it looks like for you. You know, you start uh, taking objects and, and fiddling with things. Maybe that's what the nervousness, how it manifests for you. Uh, maybe you have tension in your shoulders. Maybe you carry tension in your stomach or on your face. You know, different people carry tension in different places. So be aware of that. Expect that to happen because if you're not expecting it, it's going to hit you and it's going to blindside you at the last minute. And you're going to say, oh my God, why, why am I so nervous? Why am I so anxious? And then you develop anxiety around the fact that you're anxious. <laughs> you see how that works? So you get nervous about the fact that you're nervous. But if you expect the nervousness, if you say, you know what, this is a physiological process, fight or flight. Right? Mother Nature created this stuff for thousands and thousands of years long before I came around, and it's embedded in my DNA. Right? So that's going to happen. I can expect it. It means that I can plan for it. Right? So be aware of that. That's critically important because you don't want to be caught blindsided by those kinds of situations. You want to expect the nervousness, the nervous response, and then you'll be able to manage it and plan accordingly. So if you know you're going to be fidgeting, try to calm and force your hands to be still. If you know you carry a lot of tension in your shoulders, relax your shoulders, for example. And then a classic one is breathing, okay? And in fact, I wanna invite everybody to uh, participate in a quick breathing exercise with me right now. When you get into fight or flight, what happens is your breathing becomes more shallow, okay? So that deprives your body of oxygen, it deprives your brain of oxygen. Sometimes you realize your brain doesn't quite work that well when you're pitching and when you're presenting. That's a big reason why. So we're gonna do a quick breathing exercise and I wanna invite you to join me in this and you can participate either sitting, you can stand up, you can sit up straight either way, try to have good posture because you want to open up your chest cavity so that you can bring in uh, as much airflow as possible. And first of all, you wanna visualize that target situation, whatever is that intimidating situation. It could be a boardroom with 10 executive decision makers. It could be a stage at an expo 
pitching in front of 300 people, whatever it is, it could be a conference call. You know, you have your phone and you're staring down at the phone like this and you're like, what do I do? What do I do? Visualize that situation, whatever it means for you. And we're going to do a breathe in by a count of four and then out count of four. Okay. So in, breathe in one, two, three, four, hold it for a second and then breathe out one, two, three, four. Pause one more time. Breathe in one, two, three, four. Hold it for a second. Keep that visual image and breathe out two, three, four. And you can do that as many times as you want. You can do five breaths, seven breaths, 10 breaths. Make sure it's slow and deep. When you breathe, breathe deep down into your stomach. This is going to help you calm your nerves. It's a last minute tactic. For whatever reason, you're freaking out the moment of, the day of, right before showtime. You can do some deep, slow breathing. That will help you to calm your nerves. It's not a panacea. Ultimately, again, you got to get that experience in. But this is a last minute tactic. And it's also a daily routine, a daily practice. You could almost say it's kind of like meditative as well. When you visualize success, and there's a lot more to say about visualization techniques, which we don't have time to get to, but you visualize the success of that target situation, whatever is intimidating for you, and you associate that with a calming breath. So experience, explore, expect. Those are the three E's. And now, Courtney, we have a volunteer uh, that uh, we want to bring up on the main stage, and we're going to do a mini coaching session to, uh, to explore how, how this actually, some of this manifests with a specific uh, situation. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, we've got a volunteer here, Beverly Chu. She is new to the Smart Pitch community, and she is, of course, on here and willing to volunteer with us for the night. So hi, Beverly. How are you doing? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Great. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Justin. Hey, Beverly. How's it going? Well, I'm nervous. <laughs> well, you know what? And that's exactly why we're here. And I, I first of all, I want to thank you for volunteering. And uh, this is going to be very helpful for everybody in the group to see how this stuff really plays out and how it manifests. And this is challenging stuff. It's challenging enough to talk about uh, your, your confidence challenges and your nervousness with, with one person, much less a whole group of people. So, uh, so thank you for taking the plunge and, and for doing that. So first of all, give us a quick uh, rundown, a quick background on your product, what you do. Uh, the current product I'm trying to find a home for is a stationary product. So, you know, I find the whole thing, the whole gamut of pitching from finding companies to reaching out to them, to finding the right person, to actually, if I ever did get to speak with one, I, you know, I just find the whole thing very nerve wracking, actually. Yeah. Is, is there any particular, let me ask you this. Um, and and this is, these are exactly the types of questions that I would ask a coaching client. Is there any scenario or situation where you are very comfortable speaking? No. Okay. So like with friends, close family, even in that situation? Maybe sometimes with friends, but I'm, you know, I'm not a very confident speaker in general. I don't think, because I've had sort of speaking issues in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so you're, you're interested in like the whole running the whole gamut, basically, from from connecting with the person on LinkedIn to, you know, it could be trade shows, it could be going to their office, could be conference calls, etc. I've never actually pitched anybody in person. Um, so it's mainly done through email or now I haven't, I'm going to start doing LinkedIn now, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, eventually, we hope to get to a phone call. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of a bit later in the process. So, you know, I, I'm even afraid to press the send button when I'm sending someone a sell sheet. It just, I mean, I will do it, but, you know, I'm just not comfortable doing it. So, you know, what you said about the three E's about experience, I just thought, yeah, I, you know, maybe I just need more times doing it and, and to be more comfortable with the whole LinkedIn platform. Mm -hmm. I, I like that a lot. So I'll give you a fourth E, which is Everest. Okay, specifically Mount Everest, which is what this feels like oftentimes, <laughs> like climbing Mount Everest. 
So if I wanted to climb Mount Everest, I wouldn't just go and climb Mount Everest, right? right. I would have to, this is a multi-year process. I have to break it down. You know, first I have to start researching, you know, how do you begin climbing Mount Everest? How do you book a, a flight? How, you know, what kind of gear do I need? This is such a complex issue. So it's the same concept here. So what we have to do is we have to break this down into small chunks so that we have actionable items that are relatively easy to execute on and stuff that you can get started with immediately and gradually build up your confidence over time. Okay. okay. Now, have you done any practicing of your pitch? Like just, let's say, getting in front of your camera phone or just even rehearsing by yourself, just practicing how you would present that? Well, I have scripts that I would use, but not really, I mean, even just, you know, approaching someone on LinkedIn is kind of nerve wracking for me. Yeah. Okay. So, so this would be the first thing that I would recommend. And, and I'm, I'm focused specifically on the speaking and the presentation aspect, which is eventually what you're going to have to do. Um, if we have time, I'll give you a, a lot of the same principles apply to like just messaging somebody on LinkedIn. Uh, but I would start out literally just all by yourself with nobody around, no judgment, no nothing, just by yourself, just start speaking and presenting. Okay. Cause you haven't done that before. Right. right. Actually heard your own voice speaking the pitch. Right. Right. So you got to get comfortable with like, what does my voice sound like when I'm pitching? It's the great unknown. Right. And so the fear of the unknown is a huge problem. Right. So that's how we start to overcome that. So lock yourself in a room for 30 minutes, let's say. After 30 minutes, if you're tired, you're exhausted, you wanna take a nap, by all means, take a break, <laughs> okay? But just start, okay, how does it, like, what does it feel like to just stand up and try to pitch my product, try to pitch my idea, right? Baby steps, that's what we're going for, right? You don't climb Mount Everest overnight, it takes time, it takes practice. I would recommend you do that, let's say 20, 30 minutes a day, just by yourself. Do that for a week or two. After a week or two, see how you feel. You know, is it starting to become more normalized? Probably, nine times out of 10, it will be. Probably you feel a little bit more comfortable with just speaking, just articulating the pitch and the features of the product, et cetera, and you know, the potential customer, et cetera, et cetera, right? Also, as you rehearse, you're gonna notice there's gaps in your, um, in your pitch. So you say, oh, there's a detail that I forgot to mention. Let me include that in the next round. Oh, there's another detail that uh, I, I should include or, or I should take out this detail in the next rehearsal round, for example, right? And so you take notes and you write down all your key talking points on a piece of paper. And then over time, you own the pitch. So you become more and more confident just by yourself. Does that make sense, first of all? Yeah, I can see that starting out much more slowly would be helpful. Yeah. So... After that, the next step is this guy, okay? So you're gonna start recording yourself for your eyes only, right? Or, or on Zoom, webcam, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, this is usually extremely uh, difficult for people, uh, but it's so precious. It's so powerful to be able to see yourself and analyze yourself on camera because, and I always tell people, you know, you're only seeing what everyone else has been seeing your whole life, right? You're the only one who hasn't seen yourself speaking. Everyone else has seen it, only you have not. So now you're seeing yourself from a third party perspective. It will give you a great kind of uh, angle and insight into how you're presenting the word choice and in all those different details that are gonna come out. Again, this is just you by yourself. You could do that for a couple of weeks, a little bit every day, gradually getting more and more comfortable with it, right? At some point, you're gonna feel pretty good and you're gonna feel pretty confident with this whole process. And then you're gonna say, okay, you know what? Let me try it on one of my friends. See what my, my close friend who I trust, who I trust to give me good feedback or you know, not to you know, uh, totally uh, aggressively criticize my pitch. You know, someone that I trust, I'm going to try it in front of them, see what they think. You know, you might get there quicker than you might think. Also, if you've been doing this level of this amount of practice and rehearsal, then you expand into two or three friends simultaneously, then maybe a family member, right? So now some family members, you want to avoid presenting to them. You know, that's going to be even uh, more challenging and more uh, uncomfortable, right? 
Uh, but that's that, you know, we can go on, we can continue to map out a six month process or how to really nail this skill, but you kind of get where I'm going here, I think, right? Yeah, I see that you're really thinking of it as a skill that you can build up slowly, step by step, without it being a huge mountain on the first day. Exactly. Yeah, I like exactly. that. And so when we talk about experience, that's experience. If you wow. give your pitch a hundred times by yourself, you've spoken those words a hundred times. You know, the hundred and first time is going to be a lot easier than the very first time you do it. Right. Um, so th th those would be some, some quick tips. Now, Courtney, do we have, uh, how much time do we have left? Because if, if we have time for a quick role play, that would be great. But if not, it's not the end of the world. We've got like two, three minutes. If you could do it within that time, then let's go for it. Okay. So Beverly, let's do this. Let's, let's do something really quick. I don't want to get into the full pitch. I just want to get like one or two sentences on your product, on what it does maybe what the benefits are, whatever you think would be of interest. And here you have a whole bunch of people watching. So, you know, maybe there's a potential business opportunity. Let's see. So whenever you're ready. Poor Beverly, poor Beverly. I'm so proud of you for, for doing this. You're, you're incredible. Thank you so much, Beverly. You got this. Okay, I'm already stuck here, Justin. <laughs> well, so, so you can give your name first of all. Hi, I'm Beverly. Hi, I'm Beverly. And, and my product is? My product is a set of coloring cards for the stationary market or for uh, a, a therapeutic center because it's a interactive stationary product so people could color together. There you go. So now as soon as you say that, I'm interested, right? I'm curious, what motivated you to create this product? Well, I just know from my own experience that when two people are together and there's an awkwardness in speaking, sometimes doing a shared project like a coloring, something small coloring can sort of break the ice or just make it more comfortable to speak. So you're not actually having to really look at each other. You can be coloring and talking. So, you know, I just think it's a great kind of icebreaker, comfortable people thing to do. And it's and it's easy. There you go. Exactly. That's a pitch, right? You, you just made a pitch. Congratulations. <laughs> you didn't even have to do it by yourself, right? You did it in front of everybody. What do you think about that, Beverly? Well, I think you make people feel at ease. So, so that was helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, if you break it down, we just look at the part, the anatomy of the pitch, so to speak. Name, the product, what it does. And then I, I prompted you with the question, how did you discover this? How did you get inspired by it, right? So it was like kind of your personal connection, which I can tell, certainly, I can, I can tell you that totally makes sense exactly uh, when there's a shared activity, you know, from my experience, that absolutely uh, works, uh, bringing people together. So we have there the beginnings of something really special, Beverly. Uh, and, you know, I think, I think you should be really proud of yourself for, for taking the plunge and being able to create that essentially on the spot, you know, I'll just say, nobody knows your product better than you. And so a pitch is really your opportunity to share your knowledge and your expertise with your audience. So I would also like to mention that it sounds like the product that you're working on Beverly could help you with zoom pitches in relation to having them play it with you. Cause it sounds like an icebreaker and it might be a, a good way to icebreak yourself and the company with the product. So you might want to, of course, this is super niche for your particular product you're pitching, but I find that absolutely synchronistic that that could help you with possibly working with your product for your friends and family, and then work it up to people like Justin and Benjamin and Andrew, and myself, and then going to those companies. So good job for, for creating that product. Cause it sounds like it also comes from a deep passion from maybe a struggle that you've had and trying to find a way to break the ice. So that's, that's awesome that that's the product that you're working on as well. Thanks. Courtney. Yeah, that all is, does make perfect sense. Uh, congrats Beverly on, on working through that. I'm sure it wasn't easy to do just an amazing job of, with her on it. Um, and man, if you guys don't mind, one thing that somebody said that was helpful to me recently 
uh, before I was uh, doing a speaking thing was they, he was talking about how, uh, actually his name's Bob Sager. And he was talking about how everybody always focuses on all the different things that can go right or wrong. But if you instead focus on what does the perfect run look like? How does the perfect run feel? What's it gonna feel like in that chair? Like you were saying, uh, think about all the things around you and what it is that you're doing. How does that look on a good run? Rather than sitting around and focusing on all the things that could go wrong, focus on what it looks like when it goes right and probably have a better outcome from it. And I, I thought that was some great advice. I don't know what you have to say about that, Justin. 100%, yeah, 100%. Uh, visualization, you know, visualize success. You know, it, it's the glass half empty or half full, right? The, the external world is what it is. And we know logically, you're not gonna please everybody. There's a lot of people that you're gonna pitch to or present to, they're not interested, they're out to lunch, they're in another universe, whatever they're doing. <laughs> But you're looking for the right people and trying to connect and make the impact on the right people. And so uh, it's up to you. You have the power to choose what you choose to focus on. You know, do you choose to focus on the people that I'm really connecting with and building great rapport with? Or do I focus on those people that are giving me a hard time? You know, it's a choice, ultimately. I love it. This uh, is I so great. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, fantastic work, man. Nice watching your work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Super powerful. And of course, we've oh, got- Oh man, Bob's in the room. <laughs> yes, hey, Bob Sager is here. Up, <laughs> thanks, man. Dropping some knowledge. There you go. We've got uh, just a couple minutes left and a bunch of things to uh, get to. Of course, everyone, thank you so much for coming. Please type in your thank yous to Ben and Justin. It's always awesome when we can send these over and, and realize how powerful our community is just with sending a, a simple thank you to our speakers. So we really, really appreciate that when you guys just send in a, a little thank you. Uh, it really goes a long way. Uh, and as that's going on, we'll get that chat just zoom by. Holy cow. Um, uh, there was... Something that uh, we were going to give away. What was that? Some free stuff, some some swag of, of sorts. I don't, I don't think so. No, I, I think, think that so. was it, right? That was, nah. I don't remember anything like that, Courtney. I had no idea what you're talking about. I guess we're done. We can just, I'll just press the, uh, well, actually, you know, maybe we should, you know, hold up our end of the bargain here. Of course, uh, Stephen and Ben's new book, Licensing Ideas <laughs> Using LinkedIn, uh, which will uh, be and is now free on Kindle until the uh, end of the 28th. Um, that is just a couple days from the 26th today to no, the it's 20th. the 20, the 20, June 28th. So you guys have <laughs> all the time in the world to go download it. Don't go do it right now. It's June 20th. So it is, it is now I'm going to go ahead and type this into are we, the... are we some, some people might not understand Ben's sense of humor. Uh, so can we make it clear? No. So everybody isn't confused. We don't get tons of emails. So it is right now from this 26th to the uh, 28th, just type in licensing ideas using LinkedIn on Amazon and click on the Kindle version and download it for free. I also sent it in the chat uh, just for a, an instant link there as the thank yous are going by super fast. I'll send this a couple times. Uh, so that is again free until in, including the end of the 28th. You don't need a special May. for that. Yes, of May. Mm-hmm. You don't, you, nobody needs any code, no nothing. If they go on Amazon until that date, they're, they can download it for free. Exactly. No yeah. special link or anything. You can just go ahead and type in the book on Amazon and you will be able to um, just get it for free on there. Uh, and then the five free tickets to attend a smart pitch meeting. Uh, of course, we randomized our audience here for five different names that have been in this meeting. Uh, in the following five people, we will be contacting you with your email you signed up for with IGA, uh, and we will send the details on your winnings uh, soon after the meeting. And those people are, drum roll, please. <laughs> uh, there we go, <laughs> waiting for that. Uh, Ray Arjumand, uh, Jordan Breedlove, Gerhard Co Coetzee, uh, sorry for this. Uh, these names here of, of me botching these up. Hey, uh, Courtney, you're not any better. Your name's last name's Laskowitz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help. Yeah, come on, Courtney. 
the last two people are dudes texan and chris peterson so again those five names i'll go ahead and email you uh after uh, with the email that you sign up for with iga and i will talk to you guys about how to get that free smart pitch meeting uh, and then also our next meeting is already uh, ready to go, um, June 19th. Let me go ahead and pull this up here and you guys can take a look at who will be speaking. I just wanted to say something really quick. If you want the book, you gotta do that right away because with the way Amazon works, you can't open that up again whenever you want, because anybody on there looking at it will get it for free during that period of time. So make sure to jump on that right away. If you're emailing Courtney a week from now, it's you're going to have to pay. What has it been? It's what, what's the price? Three hundred and three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Three hundred and twenty nine dollars no, for that book. It's a very valuable book. Nineteen ninety nine. So, yeah. So get I, I just want to say, Courtney and you guys some hassle. Please just do it right away. Just go on Amazon and, and get it. OK, perfect. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You, and 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 enjoy that that uh, book will that that's one reason why I didn't mind giving a big picture uh, quick overlook tonight guys is you're getting the book for free you got all the details you need in there. Well, the, the other thing that I want to say is you do not need a Kindle device, you can read a Kindle for free on your computer on your phone on your tablet. Uh, on any device and you can download the Kindle software for free. You don't need one of those Kindle devices. People always ask that, well, I don't own a Kindle. Well, you don't need to, okay. Wonderful. And then as you guys can see, this is our next speaker on June 19th. So stay tuned for that. And then also a couple other things. Uh, Andrew, since you are here tonight, would you mind just briefly explaining to our audience what a, an inventors group uh, is as I pull up our slide of the five sponsors of our uh, 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 a gathering of people that consider themselves inventors in a room, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe there's a speaker. I don't know. Um, I, I, there's inventors associations across the country. Steve and I have spoke at these groups for the last two decades, um, and we formed IGA to support inventor group leaders. That was the whole because nobody was supporting them. And then we said, well, why don't we, why don't we do some, some Zoom meetings, some other education for inventors as well? So there are inventor groups across the country and they have speakers and you can do things in an inventors group that you can't do online. You can, you can create rapport with people, you can eat with them, you can hang out, you can use Beverly's uh, coloring uh invention <laughs> you can do all sorts of stuff and it's very encouraging i don't think you'll get everything at one meeting no inventors group meeting pulls that but you'll get something extra at these inventor group meetings these are just a few across the country just we just sample different ones every time we do this courtney but on our site they can see a listing an actual up-to-date listing there's other places you can get super super out of date listings for inventors groups and our listings are completely and totally up to date, right, Courtney? I don't yes. want to say that. Okay. Yes, they are. Yeah. So, which is nice because there's so many out of date listings for inventor groups. Like, oh my God, they just copied and pasted a list from 10 years ago. Yep. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, mentioning that, Andrew. And then while we're at it, the last thing we've got to do is just take a, a family photo. So there are lots of uh, people here on this meeting. So Andrew, whenever you're ready, take your time. Uh, well, we don't know where everyone is on each uh, slide. So everyone go ahead and give your best smile for about a minute and uh, let's rock and roll. <laughs> just give a thumbs up or a wave or a smile for about a minute. Then I'll keep changing the pages and try to just ones that we have people up keep going all right we've got a second page we've got third page we've got fourth page after that nobody's on video so okay i think we're good perfect all right thank you very much andrew and with that said uh thank you everyone uh for coming especially thank you ben and justin any last quick remarks uh before we end the call ben or justin I fun. just want to thank Justin for, for coming on, man. You have a, a really know your stuff. Thanks for, for coming on. And, and Beverly, thanks for being a volunteer. It took a lot of guts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of you. You've been doing a fantastic job with Smart Pitch. 
she was showing off her new profile yesterday. She was acting like she wanted a critique, but she just wanted me to brag on her. I could tell. <laughs> but uh, thanks, Beverly. Justin, man, really nice getting to to meet you and, and see what you do, man. You, you're fantastic at it, brother. Uh, Thank thanks you. for for uh, sharing with us. Same here. Thank, thanks for having me. And it's great to be here. And thank you again, Beverly, for taking the plunge and, and for sharing. And, uh, and Courtney, yeah, Beverly. thank you for, for emceeing and uh, for absolutely an organizer. So. Of course. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, so much for coming to our meeting today. Uh, again, thank you so much, Ben and Justin, for speaking with us. And of course, we hope to see you all in our next meeting on June 19th and beyond so we can bring you more expert information in the areas you need help in. Thanks again, everyone, and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye.